Hi, Goggle. Look, Toggle, I have got an invitation from the City Science Club for a discussion on supercomputers. That's great, Goggle. But why do you look so worried? Well, to be honest, I don't know anything about supercomputers. <laughs> don't worry, Goggle. I will help you. Thanks, Toggle. You always are a great help. Well, Goggle, supercomputers are actually the fifth generation computers. They are very powerful and have very large storage capacity. Sounds great. And that's not all, Goggle. Supercomputers run on very high speed and can also perform very complex operations that you will not be able to carry out in your computer. So that's why they are called supercomputers. But why are they called the fifth generation computers? <laughs> well, Goggle, computers have a long history of evolution. It was not made by one person in a single day. Just like we humans, right? <laughs> yes, Goggle, just like humans, this computer on your desk has also seen many stages of evolution before ending up on your table as a smart machine. This is getting quite interesting. Toggle, can you tell me more about the evolution of modern computers? Sure, Goggle. Here we go. To know about the evolution of the modern computer, we have to start from the first generation computers. The first generation computers were very large in size. They had very small internal storage and were very expensive. These computers used vacuum tubes. I wonder what the first generation computers looked like. Well, they were huge. As an example, let us take the Mark 1. Mark 1 was one of the first generation computers designed by Howard H. Icahn in 1944. It was about 15 meters long and the wires connecting the various parts were about 800 kilometers long. What? A 15 meter long computer that required 800 kilometers of wires. How can one keep it at home? <laughs> These first generation computers were never meant for homes. They were kept in laboratories specially made for them. Oh, a lab to keep only one computer. It must have been a very efficient computer. Right, Toggle? Well, no goggle. On the contrary, the Mark 1 was slow and took 3 to 5 seconds to perform a single calculation. Then what was so special about it? Why keep such a slow machine in a laboratory? Because it was the first fully automatic calculator. There was no other calculating machine smarter than the Mark 1 at that time. Oh, now I understand. Now, the limitations of first generation computers were First, they operated very slowly. Second, they had very high power consumption. Third, they required very large space. Fourth, these weren't all that easy to program for tasks. Ok Toggle, so what happened next? Well Goggle, after the first generation computers came the second generation computers. These are the computers developed between 1959 and 1964. Were the second generation computers very bulky too? No goggle. To avoid bulkiness, the second generation computer used transistors instead of vacuum tubes. Were transistors any better than vacuum tubes toggle? Transistors are much smaller compared to vacuum tubes and also much cheaper. This means the second generation computers were smaller, faster, cheaper and more efficient than the first generation computers. Yes, Goggle. They had all the components that we use with modern day computers like printers, storage capacity, disk storage and an operating system too. Were the second generation computers easier to program than the first? Yes, Goggle, due to programming languages like COBOL and FORTRAN, which were developed during this period, the second generation computers were easier to program than the first. Could you name some second generation computers, Toggle? 
the IBM 1401 and the RCA 501 are examples of second generation computers. Toggle, our teacher mentioned something about chips. What are they? Aha! The chip is a very important invention and it resulted in the third generation of computers. Well, tell me more then, Toggle. The third generation computers were developed between 1964 and 1970. These computers used integrated circuits or ICs. It is these ICs that we popularly call chips. The third generation computers were smaller than the second generation computers. I'm sure they had better storage capacities than the second generation computers. Absolutely, Goggle. Also, they used an operating system that allowed them to run different programs at the same time. Any examples, Toggle? Yes, Goggle. The IBM 360 series and the 370 series are examples of third generation computers. All modern computers use chips. Toggle, I guess then my computer too uses chips. Yes, Goggle, but these chips are definitely different from the ones used in the third generation computers. Why is that, Toggle? Because yours is a fourth generation computer. Well then, do tell me how third generation computers evolved into fourth generation computers. Sure, Goggle, the fourth generation computers are the ones that have been developed from 1971 till the present time. So, how are they different from third generation computers? The fourth generation computers use microprocessors. Microprocessors, Toggle. Microprocessors are a type of very large scale integrated circuits. These integrated circuits contain all the components of a CPU on a tiny single chip. On one small chip, this would have definitely made computers much smaller in size. Right, Toggle? <laughs> Absolutely, Goggle. That's why my computer is so small in size compared to third generation computers. <laughs> yes, Goggle. Not only is your computer smaller, it is also faster than any third generation computer as your computer has microprocessors. Any examples of fourth generation computers, Toggle? The IBM PC and the Apple Macintosh are the early fourth generation computers. They have evolved into the modern, sleek desktops and laptops we see today. Okay, got that toggle. You see Goggle, in the evolution of fourth generation computers, the major focus had been on reducing size and improving efficiency. Yes, and this resulted in smaller yet faster computers. So now can you suggest how modern computers can be made even better? Yes, Toggle, that's what I was thinking. Modern computers can be made better if they have higher storage capacity, higher speed and also the ability to do more complex operations. Bingo! That is what the fifth generation computers or the supercomputers are all about. The fifth generation computers are also known as supercomputers. Their development started in 1989 and is still under progress. Supercomputers have very high storage capacities, high speeds and yes, they also have the ability to carry out highly sophisticated operations. Can you give me an example of a supercomputer? The Cray 1 series is an example of supercomputers. It was developed in the USA. Um, Toggle, has India developed any supercomputer? Yes, Goggle, the first supercomputer built by India was Param 8000. It was completed and installed in 1991. Well, Toggle, even after so much information on computers, I still do not know why this invitation card says the new thinking supercomputers. What does thinking computers mean? Well, Goggle, a computer is a machine. It cannot have any thinking capability and so cannot take decisions on its own. We have to tell it what to do at every step. I know that, Toggle. 
In recent years, scientists are trying to make computers that can think like we do and can take decisions. But how can anybody make a computer think? Goggle. There is a branch of computer science called artificial intelligence or AI. Artificial intelligence. I know of a movie by that name. I didn't know computers can be made to have art artificial intelligence. Even if they did, how would artificial intelligence help computers? The aim of using artificial intelligence is to create computers that can think, behave and react in the same way as humans do. But we still do not have any computers that can do so, right Toggle? Yes Goggle, currently we do not have such a computer. However, the fifth generation computers are expected to overcome the lack of thinking power in the earlier generations. Wow, this sounds like sci-fi, science fiction. But don't you think the story of the evolution of computers is all about fiction becoming fact? True toggle, maybe someday in the future.